Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk to you about the least disturbing book I've ever read, Cows by Matthew Stokoe. Now, before I start, clearly I'm being a little bit tongue-in-cheek uh, in that introduction. This is not the least disturbing book I've ever read, uh, but it might be the least disturbing, disturbing book I've ever read. Um, so this is a book that was recommended or suggested by a bunch of people in the comments for my video, um, which was a review of the book Notice by Heather Lewis, which I said was the most disturbing book I've ever read. Um, and as you may know, I've kind of embarked on um, a project to read books that were suggested in the, in the, in the comments for that video. Um, and Cows is one of them. So this is a book that loads of people mentioned um, as a book they'd either um, read themselves and found disturbing or had heard was disturbing. Um, and it definitely has that reputation of being a, a challenging and difficult book to read. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. And, and is it disturbing? No, it's not disturbing. What it is, is disgusting disgusting. It is one of the most disgusting <laughs> books I've ever read. So I've read a lot of books with, you know, explicit content, particularly, you know, in, in the horror genre, explicit gore and things like that. I think this is the book that came closest to making me physically sick. Um, there is one scene in this book which is absolutely foul um, and where the the author dwells on the foulness and describes the foulness. To be fair to him, it does a good job of describing the disgusting thing that he is he is writing about so well um, that it really did nearly make me puke. Um, but apart from that scene, um, this book is kind of weird, <laughs> just weird and dull. Um, there is, so to be fair, there is one other scene towards uh, towards the end of the book, certainly in the second half of the book, which is absolutely horrifying. Um, so a scene of uh, like self-mutilation, um, which I wouldn't have said was disturbing necessarily, um, but it is, um, dis it is definitely horrifying. It's a very horrible scene and quite difficult to read as a result. Um, and one of the things um, I thought reading this book is, is it has helped me distill my thoughts a little bit about what I personally find disturbing. Um, and I did talk a bit about this in my um, in my review of, of Notice. Um, for me, the thing that makes a book really disturbing is when you, you make a connection with the character and you feel sympathy for the character and what they're going through and you can relate to it in some way. And the problem with cows is that so much of it is so extreme and so surreal and so off the wall that you just never make that connection, or I certainly never did anyway. So um, let me tell you what it's about. So it's about a young guy called Stephen um, who lives with his mother. Um, so he's like in his early 20s, I think. And they live in this flat and she's a, an appalling person. She's absolutely vile to him. She makes him eat this kind of strange um, meat. It's never really clear exactly what it is, um, but she's trying to like, you know, strengthen him up. And she, she kind of plays at being a, um, a good mother. Um, by you know by feeding him and stuff like that but everything she does has a, a kind of horrible twist to it um so there is many uh many kind of disgusting scenes of him just being forced to eat horrible meat for example um Stephen works at a slaughterhouse so he gets a job at a slaughterhouse and that's why the book is called cows um and the people that work at the slaughterhouse are also very strange people. Um, there's one um, incredibly bizarre and disgusting scene involving um, what the slaughterhouse workers do to the cows um, uh, in, during the process of, of killing them. And if you read the book, you, you know the bit I'm talking about. But like a lot of the stuff in the book, that scene is just so off the wall and so weird um, that it, it lacks any real impact because it's so completely outside of our normal um, daily reality that that you just can't um, you just can't put your mind in the place where it gets disturbed by it if that makes sense. And I was thinking about this in terms of um, you know when you're watching a, a movie or something like that and you see someone get injured. I don't know if it's the same for you as it is for me, but I find if I see if I'm watching a movie and someone gets their arm cut off. It's like, oh, okay, that's horrible, but I can't, I can't associate with it because I don't know what it's like to have my arm cut off. Whereas if somebody gets a small cut on their skin, I know what that feels like. 
Um, I was watching the film Terrifier 2 the other day, uh, which is incredibly gory and violent. Um, but the scenes that affected me most deeply in terms of me being able to put myself in the in the mind of the character who was having this pain inflicted on them um, was a scene where somebody had like loads of small cuts made on them because I know what a small cut feels like and so I can imagine what multiple small cuts feel like. Um, so yeah, the problem with cows is so much of it is so massively bizarre that you just can't associate with it. Now the scene that I talked about um, that is disgusting, I'm not going to spoil it by saying what it is, but it it it. it it's something I could imagine, um, and I think that's what made it disgusting. But apart from that, the book, you know, really fails to hit the mark um, in terms of disturbingness. Now, on the on the back of the book, um, it's compared in one of the reviews to the book The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks, which I've reviewed on the channel a while ago. Now, I think The Wasp Factory is a is a fantastic book, and I can see why the reviewers made that connection between um, The Wasp Factory and Cows. So, like The Wasp Factory, Cows features. Um, a young man kind of moving into adulthood um, with a very domineering parent um, and there's lots of weird stuff going on. Um, but whereas Cows is just daft, um, The Wasp Factory is quite effective because it, because I think in that book Ian Banks shows a wonderfully kind of macabre and grotesque and inventive imagination. Um, whereas in Cows, Matthew Stokoe um, just, he, it comes across like he's a schoolboy um, scrawling things in his notebook to gross his friends out. It, it's like he's just trying to be as disgusting as possible rather than actually putting any thought into what is effective um, and what is, you know, interesting and... I don't want to use the word stimulating because it sounds wrong in terms of disturbing content, but the kind of stuff that lingers with you, that sticks in your mind, and, and that isn't something that Kales achieves in, in any sense at all, I don't think. It, it felt to me, as I say, like a very juvenile... Um, piece of uh, you know piece of writing not not only because um of the it's it's kind of constant desire to shock and offend um but also because um just the storyline is is you know has no real tension or anything like that to it um and the 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 scenes that are there are scenes that are horrible but kind of you know you can you can believe they would happen, um, but there are multiple scenes in this in this book as well, which are just a absolutely surreal. Um, like talking cows, for example, um, you know, which are just kind of almost like magical realism type stuff, um, which put side by side with the the more realistic, disgusting stuff, just again, just doesn't work at all. It just doesn't make sense. Um, so, and, and and the other thing about this book that I found particularly difficult was. Um, it feels like Matthew Stokoe thinks he's writing something quite intelligent. It feels like he thinks there's a message in here. Um, and I've got no idea what that message is. Um, but I'm fairly sure if there is a message in here, it's not one I particularly want to receive. Um, whereas in The Wasp Factory, it didn't feel really like... Um, like Ian Banks was was trying to preach to his audience at all. He's just trying to write an, an enjoyably dark story. So yeah, overall, not a book I enjoyed at all. It's incredibly um, puerile and juvenile. Um, it's, um, it's shocking um, in a boring, boring way. The story doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and it feels like, as I said, that it's that it's trying to get across a, a deeper message, um, which was completely lost on me. Um, so yes, def definitely not a hit and definitely, <laughs> definitely not a book I recommend at all. OK, time for a random book from the shelves then, um, from a uh, creator who is much better um, at being shocking um, and disgusting um, than Matthew Stokoe could ever dream to be, uh, and that is John Waters. Um, so this is a non-fiction book by John Waters, Carsick, where he talks about um, his experiences hitchhiking um, across America. Um, I haven't read this yet, but I'd, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm a big fan of John Waters' movies, even his really disgusting ones. Um, I think there's, there's something about the way he does that kind of thing, um, which is just infectiously amusing um, in the way that Matthew Stokoe just, just isn't at all. Um, so, you know, Waters can be incredibly juvenile as well, but he does it in, a, in, in an interesting way, I think. 
So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know if you've read Cows um, and what you thought of it. There do seem to be some people out there who really, really like it. Clearly, I'm not one of them. But, you know, if you did, more power to you. Um, but, yeah, do let me know why you liked it if you did. Um, as always, um, you can connect with me um, via social media. So Instagram, Twitter um, and on my Discord um, or Goodreads. Um, the links to all of those are in the About section for the channel. So it'd be great to um, connect with you there and talk about books. Um, but in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.